Welcome Python coders. We're going to show you how the solutions would go for uh, the assignment for chapter three. Here's the first program, the first problem. And you'll recall, uh, recall it's about a cashier program. We want the price, that would be a float. We want the quantity. I thought that would be a float. Uh, I was thinking, you know, what if it's a deli and we're talking about meat and maybe you want to order a half a pound of meat. So I let that one be a float too. But if you use an int there, that's okay. And then we have our taxable. Hey, whenever you have a program, when you want the user to respond either yes or no, you've got to tell them exactly how to respond so that you'll have something that you can check in your program. There are so many ways that you could respond positively to a question like this, right? I mean, you could say yes, uh-huh, you bet, sure. I mean, there's lots of ways you could re respond positively. So whenever you have a question like that in a program, always tell the, the user how you want them to respond because we're going to use that to check our logic down here. Okay. Now, first thing we want to do is calculate the subtotal, price times quantity. And then if it is taxable, we'll, we'll multiply the subtotal by the sales tax rate, 0 0.07. I probably could have used a constant for that since that was a... a a concept back in chapter two that I would like to have used. But anyway, we just did it with a, uh, with a value here. And then you also want to work out the tax. If no tax applies, you have to say the tax is zero. You can't just forget about it because we do have to report the tax, whether there is tax or not. And then here we have our three outputs. Now, the main thing to remember here is we're using the format function to get two decimal places. That's what the point two F does. But also we want the dollar sign to be right up against the first digit in the in the currency amount. And so we have to eliminate the space that this comma normally it would, would insert. A comma inside of a print uh, statement, as you know, will insert a space between the print items. We don't want that. And so we can cancel that with the SEP operator. This is an empty string in between the two apostrophes. So we'll give it a quick run. And we'll say we went with the uh, 279 and we got three at that price and it was taxable so you can see it did add the tax on now i'm going to run the program again and because i've used the main function I'm, I'm going to be able to repeat it just by doing this now i'm going to enter that unit price again i'll try a different price i'll try 249 and four of them and no not taxable and as you can see now the tax is zero and that does look like it's working properly. Okay, so you know that's good. Hope you're all right with that. By the way, I, meant, I forgot to mention that we're using main here. Uh, you don't have to do this. You can get the full points if your program only has this much content here, but we would like you to start using the main function. And you, to do that, you use def, which is short for definition, define, define, and then main, open parentheses, close parentheses, colon. And when you press enter, you'll see that your next line is going to be uh, tabbed in. It'll be indented one tab. And all of the other lines that are inside the function should be also indented one tab. Now, to get main to run, we need to put main down here at the bottom of our program. And that has to be right up against the margin. Okay, enough about that one. Let's, uh, let's have a look at uh, number two. All right, this is a relatively sim simple one. We want the user to enter integer between 1 and 100 inclusive. That means it could be 1 and it could be 100. Well, the, the whole point of this one is knowing about the AND operator. We've got a complex Boolean expression here. There's a Boolean expression here, which can evaluate true or false. And so will this evaluate as true or false. Well, when you've got two expressions like that, each expression should be a complete uh, Boolean expression. So you notice that I've repeated num here. And <clears throat> because both of these have to be true, well, that's what and is all about. So this is a pretty straightforward. I, I think uh, you can follow this one okay without me having to run. Here's the third one. All right, this one uh, asks for uh, uh, entering a credit score and then giving the credit rating of that particular score. And we did want you to respond to values that were out of range. At the top of the range is 850, and the low end of the range is 300. So you can see I've started out by uh, <clears throat> looking for a score that's greater than 850 and then reporting that or storing that in a variable <clears throat> result being out of range. 
Now, if it's greater than 720, it's excellent. Greater than 690, it's good. Greater than 630, it's fair. Greater than 300, it's bad, unfortunately. Now, if it's not greater than 300, in other words, if it's less than 300, then it's out of range on the low side. Okay, now, your probing doesn't have to be exactly like this, but we did want you to use the if, elif, elif, else concept. That's why we gave you a hint in, in the uh, problem statement here. That's why we wanted you to, here's the hint down here. We wanted you to refer to pages 130 to 132 and use that type of coding. Hope you saw that hint. Okay. And uh, I'll give it a quick run. So I'll go with uh, 450. Not good. Now I can rerun. This is the other advantage of using the main function. I can make the program rerun again by typing main right here. So let's see if I went with 700. That's good. So it looks like this is working properly. Let's have a look at the last one. This last program, this is a quiz program, and you have to have specific requirements for this quiz. You have to have one, one question that required an int, there's mine, one that required a flow, one that required a string. And as you know, if you use input by itself, that, that gives you a string. And then another one that had two possible correct answers. So yours could be completely different from this, but equally correct. So I'm going to try to get that right. I'll get this one right as well. I'll put 0 0.125. Uh, small estate by uh, uh, area. I'll go with Rhode Island, but just misspell it. So that's not correct. And possible answers here might be March or April. And I made it case sensitive, so you have to enter it with the proper case. Okay, so that's uh, what, what I would consider four good programs for that uh, assignment. Hope you're okay with that. You have any questions about it? Yeah.